Hello and welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to teach you something that you can do with a breadboard. I like to call it Echo Mode. So what does it do? Echo Mode will turn off some of your engines and turbines where you're not in combat or it will make sure that your vehicle is topped off with enough power, especially electric power. Here is an example of where you can use Echo Mode. This ship has some steam turbines and steam engines and while it's idle and not moving, it's burning around 8 materials a second. So I know that many of you will slap a lot of ACBs in your ship just to turn off some engines on and off and some turbines. So today I'm going to show you how you can make an Echo Mode breadboard. Alright, so welcome to my desert platform. This is just like a table right now. It doesn't, uh, it's not floating or using any, you know, it's not a fortress basically. It's not a floating fortress, that's what I mean. Anyway, so this is a breadboard here. I know many of you are scared of breadboards. You think they are evil things. But today I'm actually going to show you that you can use this thing to streamline and remove a lot of ACBs from your ship. So what I'm going to do, we're going to use something called a Met Evaluator, which is this thing. Here we have inputs, here we have components. The Met Evaluator is a component. So what we're going to do, we're going to type a formula, which is like an equation, basically. And it's it's basically just a switch. I'm actually going to show you what it is. I have I'm going to have everything written down in the description. So you know, if you miss something, just go there under the video and just uh, copy paste whatever you want. Anyway, this is the equation that we're going to use. If open bracket. By the way, it's a round bra uh, it's a round bracket, not a square bracket if open bracket open bracket a is equal to one close bracket comma one comma zero and close bracket so basically what we're doing here is we're asking the met evaluator if it's if a is one then do open or close or whatever we want by the way, 1 and 0, uh, they can be changed to, for example, 10 or uh, negative 10 or whatever you, you're you going to need. Anyway, so we're going to write that first in the breadboard. Grab this and we're just going to type if double bracket A is equal to 1, close bracket, comma 1, comma 0 and close bracket again so we're actually going to test this we get a constant which is like an input number that you can change to whatever you like and from the component we're gonna grab a printer we connect the printer here it says zero which is you know normal because we're not got we don't have anything connected here and here we have a one and as you can see it's working if i add a 10 instead of a one here if A is 1, which is this one, then 10. So that works. That actually works. So I'm going to keep it like this. So let's address here the biggest elephant in the room, which is the steam engine. You probably have steam engine like this in some of your vehicles. So what we're going to do, we're going to power the steam engine only if there's an enemy. Right? So what we're going to do... Here we have a medium steam controller and what we're going to trigger uh, this steam controller to turn on this engine when it detects an enemy. So what we're going to do, we grab a primary target info from the input, put it here. Now this has a lot of information about enemies, uh, it has bearing distance, but we're just going to use the first one. This is, is there an enemy? If there's an enemy, print a one. Connect it here. And then we're going to get a generic block setter from the component. Put it somewhere here. And then we're going to use medium steam controller. Burn rate. As you can see, it says burn rate zero or one. 
one is 100%, zero is, well, it's off. So we're going to do just that. Right, so everything should be hooked up. This is for the steam engine. I'm just gonna type steam engine here. Large steam engine. Right. Let's spawn a marauder and make fun of it while it's stuck. Desert, hopefully it doesn't shoot me, right? I don't even know where it, where it spawned. Oh, it's up there. Okay, so as you can see, Marauder spawned and the engine is starting to spool up and it's basically working. I delete the Marauder and it turns itself off. Now, this is not ideal because your engine is going to take ages to spool up, especially if it's a steam engine like this and it's large. So what we're going to do, we're going to make a uh, pressurized steam engine so back here we can plug this vent and we're going to use a steam pipe vent which is this one right now if you have more than one of these you can actually give it a name and then put it in the breadboard I'm just gonna call it uh, shift N by the way shift N I'm just gonna call it uh, V1 right for vent Vent 1. So I go back here. Actually, I need to disconnect this engine. Very important. Disconnect it. You can turn on the engine again by just pressing, getting a constant of 1 on it. It should turn on again. Yeah, it's turning on as you can see. Check just in case. Yeah, it's turning on. Yes. Okay, so it's turning on, right? So what I'm going to do actually, I'm just going to pressurize this. What's going to happen? The boiler is still going to run and the engine is going to get pressurized. But the material should be zero soon. I'm just going to wait a little bit, see what happens. But meanwhile, I'm going to change some of this here. So we have a vent now. A vent, where is it? Steam pipe vent. And the steam pipe vent works the same as a steam boiler, but the only difference is that zero releases the pressure and one closes the pressure. So we're going to change our equation here and we're going to change the one to a zero. And we're going to change the 0 to a 1 because we're going to release the pressure. Right, so right now it's closed. As you can see, the steam engine is starting to have back pressure problems, which is normal. Going to wait a little bit. So as you can see, the uh, steam engine has completely stopped. It's fully pressurized, as you can see. It's completely pressurized and I'm barely using any materials now. It should, should turn to 0, 0.0 soon as the temperature keeps going down. But anyway, I mean, this is not going to consume anything. So what we're going to do now, same thing. When we spawn a marauder, I'm actually going to spawn it very close so you guys can see it drop. When I spawn this marauder, that pressure valve should release and the steam engine should fire up right away. Oh no. And as you can see, that uh, that works perfectly. And once I close it again, it will close this vent. And that's how you save a lot of materials from a steam engine. So here we have a steam turbine, usually use these to power up electricity. And you can do the same thing that I did with the steam engine here. You can just turn it on and off with just a controller when there's an enemy. But you know, there's steam lag as well. So what you can do 
we're going to do something a bit different. We're going to make it like a phone charger, basically. I'm actually going to show you what I mean. So here we have the same formula. We're going to do 1 and 0 this time. Right, so we're going to read how much battery power we have. And here we have battery storage medium. Now, if I use a printer here and just connect it like this, we have this much power right now. Now, maybe a lot of you might have used this to like do like an equation with minus or plus. We're not going to do that. We're going to change this to a percentage. I'm actually going to show you how. So right now we have total battery energy and we have fraction. We're going to grab the fraction like this and we're going to multiply it by 100 and that's going to change the fraction to a percentage i'm actually actually going to use a printer here just to show you i'm just going to connect this to this so i can do something like uh my energy is at 100% 100% Oh, first percent <laughs> Okay, my energy is at 100% right now So that's fine So what we're going to do instead of using A equals 1 We're going to do something a bit different We're going to do If A is less A is less than 75% you're going to turn on the turbine. So we're going to grab the steam, medium steam engine controller again. Connect this to this. And connect this to this. So right now my energy is at a 100% as you can see. So what we're going to do, I have this ACB that will start firing those specs. Hopefully I don't destroy my own uh, uh, fortress here. Anyway, let's turn it on and as you can see the battery is going down battery power is going down and the steam engine is just kicking in because the energy is under 75% so now if I by the way I I'm just using too much power or turbine can't keep up so as it's charging actually going to turn itself off once we hit 75 percent it will actually turn off by the way there is there's going to be steam lag again because you know that's how it works and it's turning itself off as you can see because it reached 75 percent okay so as you saw the steam turbine is pretty good like this but sometimes you want to use something that kicks in a bit more quicker so we're going to remove the steam lab from the steam turbine now to do this what you need to do going to move everything on back here we're going to add a steam valve now very important to make the steam valve face towards the uh, Steam turbine make sure that that arrow is pointing from the boiler to the uh, steam turbine just like that by the way why am i making everything blue here i don't know so make sure to disable this option when close when breach is detected close that let's see is it running yes it is so right now it's running i'm wasting 31 but 0.31 materials a second, which is not a lot, like I said. Anyway, we're going to tell that steam valve to close if we are more than 75%, but it will open once we are less than 75%. So, generic blood setter. We're going to use steam valve, not steam vent, right? Steam vent is for the other thing that I showed you before. So we have back pressure here, which is perfect. Back pressure is actually the second point here. It's not the first point, it's the second point. So we're going to connect this. 
and that should close the steam valve completely see that is closed and now my boiler is running but it's consuming zero right completely consuming zero and uh, we're going to test that again let's do it 50 percent though this time you can actually see it again a bit more late so we're, con we're consuming electric power 81,075 it should kick in now and it kicks in just like that I'm going to turn it off again not easy to show you this stuff by the way so it's charging up to 50% and then it's going to close this valve and there you go okay so next thing is the jet engine we can actually make electricity from a jet engine and let's say you have a plane with three jet engines and you want to use one of them to generate electricity but not all the time only when it's needed so you add a jet generator here and let's make it generate energy right by the way you can switch these with a breadboard but i'll actually show you the easy stuff for now so right now it's zero right that means that we're not converting any of this thrust to electricity what we're going to do and as you can see my batteries are like 50 percent right now which is it 52 percent so generic block setter same equation same equation and we're going to find jet generator right so the first option here is maximum thrust factor used to generate uh, 0 to 1 I'm guessing right so 0 is 0 and 1 is 100% so we're going to use let's use 50% here right because let's say this thing is on a plane and you just want to use 50% of its power by the way you can complicate this a lot but uh, for now we're just gonna keep it nice and simple Right, we connect it to the first input here, and it should work. Hello, is it not working? Ah, it's interesting. So I had it to if it's less than fifty percent, it was like fifty-two percent, so it didn't count. That, and we should see this thing. Yeah. So right now completely stop there because it's charging the battery but uh, if you want you can make it just half so 0 0.5 so this should still give you trust but we're generating 508 energy a second anyway let's move on to fuel engines so here we have two fuel engines and what we're going to do we're going to tell this supercharged engine to be our generator only when needed and we're going to have this for our engines so what i'm going to do here i'm actually going to start this thing here right go to start this thing they're both working right now this one is working, this one is working, but uh, what we're going to do, we're going to use this fuel engine as a generator. So you can see fuel engine and generator there, which is this block. I mean, many of you know what this block is. We're going to name this to something. Let's call it E1. And we're going to tell E1 to charge our battery to let's say 90% let's do 95% here image as uh, <laughs> this thing turned on itself hey stop it stop 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 there you go this is why you always disconnect stuff right that's done so what we're going to do same formula same everything again we're going to you 
let's use 100% of the engine power to convert it to electricity generic block tether again and we're going to use fuel engine generator so it's E1 so E1 by the way if it's not E1 you can see here it's hash 2 hashtag number 2 that means it's going to control two engines you don't want that so E1 and as you can see it says I'm just going to control that engine so we just so one is okay and it is charging the battery as you can see it's charging the battery right now and the other engine is just you know controlling that uh, crank which is handy and this thing should switch back oh there you go I actually you guys probably didn't catch that I'm gonna show you again it's enough so as you can see it's charging to 100% and then it stops obviously you can set that to 50% by changing this one to 0.5 or whatever you want and you can have more than one of these for each engine for example you can have uh, an engine that that's very efficient and you want it to like make it a generator but then if it doesn't keep up you have like another backup engine and like set it to like if it's less than 25 percent then i want you to also help the other engine you can do that pretty much let's remove this okay so now i'm going to show you another method here where you can also control some of the propulsion with uh, fuel engines i'm actually not sure where but someone was actually complaining on these steam forums that you can't really like lower the power of uh you will engine right uh, you know he has he has a point he doesn't have a point i don't know but uh, i actually have a solution for you so here we have a medium crank that's running almost at full power here yeah it's running at full power uh, by the way these will actually not run at full power if they're in the water but that's fine it's just an example so right now i have 4700 uh, energy available so i'm actually so what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna disable user. There you go, so you can kinda see there. So now I have that engine is kinda using quite a lot of power there. It's like what what is that? That's 700 something. Yeah, it's not 700, it's like 600 something. Anyway, so let's say you have a ship, right? That's very, very fast. And you don't want it to like be running full speed all the time especially if there's no enemies around so we can do something like this we have a primary target info again this is the same thing that i did with the first steam engine connect this to this same formula again if it's equals one one or zero so then we need to use the medium crank find the medium crank here medium large crank actually actually a large crank i'm so used to medium cranks that i end up uh, searching for them so what we're going to do if i go to this large crank you see how we have maximum rpm we're going to lower the rpm of this crank basically so here we have that's by the way it was more worth it to do this in reverse have the other engine because the other engine is supercharged but uh whatever i know about that right so we're going to use how much is that 0 0.5 you can use 0 0.5 right 0 0.5 is fine and then we'll crank it to maximum which is two so we'll have we'll just do that right now so if there's an enemy, I want you to crank the RPM to 2. If there's no enemy, I want you to crank down the RPM to 0 0.5. Connect that, it's gonna say 0 0.5 because there's no enemy. Spawn a marauder and laugh at it while it's stuck on the ground. And you can see. The RPM is going up because it's set to 2. I delete it. 
and the breadboard will set it back to 0.5 or whatever you need by the way this is very good if you have a i don't know if you have a a ship that likes to dolphin actually do something like that on some of my ships but that's for another tutorial i hope you guys enjoyed this uh, video make sure to subscribe and like and i'll see you for more tutorials on from the depths thank you for watching